want to talk a little about um, your recent article there in the Athletic with Pierre LeBrun. Um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I'm sure people saw it there, picked up some media attention of me coming out of the closet. Um, it was a long time coming for me. I think, you know, the hockey world, as you can see in the article there, if you haven't read it, it's on the Athletic. I've got some of the, you know, Connor and Sid and some good, some good friends and Tyson and Morgan Riley. And, um, you know, just that the hockey world isn't that big and bad and you build it up that, you know, sexuality is such a small piece of who you are and, you know, people should be judged on their character and their work ethic and not, you know, their sexuality. And I think it was, you know, it, you know, it was a big relief for me to, to, you know, go public with it. It was kind of combining my personal and my, my professional life, but um, the feedback that I've had and the, you know, the outreach uh, just, it's been, you know, extremely overwhelming. It was, it came out about a month ago, um, the story and um, you know, the follow-up with media and everything. And I'm not, it's not a woe is me story. My family has been fantastic. My support network has been fantastic. Um, you know, but there is still those barriers in the game um, of that old guard and that, you know, people don't think that there's a place for them in the game where I'm just trying to break that down that, Hey, it's such a small piece of who you are. Um, it's like any issue or any, you know, um, thing, if you, if you get it out there and humanize it and address the elephant in the room, then it, then it's not a big issue, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a disagreement with your coach or your parents or two players on a team, if you don't talk about it and get it out there, people can't read minds. They can't, you know, I always say people don't know what they don't know. You know, and I, I say that with young prospects, you know, that they don't know nutrition and sleep and this and that. So as much as my work is kind of repetitive in, 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 you know, making sure that they have all the right tools, I think it's any issue that if you get in front of it and just talk about it and, you know, normalize it, then it's not an issue. And I think, you know, by that story coming out and, you know, me living my truth now, I think it's going to help a lot of young people um, that there is a spot for them in the game, regardless of, you know, sexual orientation. And I'm not just talking players, I'm talking officials, executives, uh, on ice officials, uh, power skating coaches, you name it hockey. It's not just players, you know, you could be a hockey fan. Um, but if you don't feel accepted by the game, then that's going to draw you away from it. So that's really what I was trying to do with the article is just, obviously it's a huge relief for me personally, but also to help, um, you know, using my platform to help some people that are struggling and not willing to, to talk about it or get it out there. And, and, you know, I think hockey, we talked about it earlier is such a brotherhood that the, and I've seen that the, the support I've had, um, you know, has been, unbelievable like I get uh, worked up even talking about it just because it's been I still get outreach from people um, you know saying that hey whether it's a kid that is uh, a marketing student that I don't know you know personally he just sends me a message on Instagram hey I'm a marketing student at Ryerson uh, you know I didn't think there was a place for me in the game because I'm gay and now you've you know you've broken down those barriers or players in Quebec saying hey I'm going to talk to my team tomorrow because you know you involved some superstar athletes and normalized it you know, and, and, and just said, Hey, it is okay. You know, I'm not a bad person. There's nothing, you know, there's enough negativity in the world right now, you know, with COVID and just a weird, weird 2020 that, um, you know, I was just trying to, you know, get it out there that it is normal and it is going to be okay. And I think the world, you know, the, the feedback I've had has been uh, amazing. Right. Yeah. Well, well, good for you there, Banner. And, and of course, very proud of you. Um, and, and, like you said, just, just basically educating everyone out there that the viewers and, and people just taking the time to listen um, mm -hmm. and learn really. Um, and I think so sports many. is really that final frontier, you know, of, of, um, you know, addressing it, you know, I think society is well ahead. You look at some great diverse cities around the world and the causes of, you know, whether it's black lives matter or sexuality, or, you know, there's always something to, to plant your flag in and, and get behind. And for me, this was obviously personal for me and, you know, I'm just hoping to, to educate people. And I think, you know, that sports is kind of the final frontier, but I think, again, it's just talking about it. And I think that's only going to help the cause and, you know, guys like Brian Burke and, you know, there's been some great initiatives out there. And um, I think it's just, again, continuing to get momentum and normalizing it and Hey, it's all good. It's um, you know, be who you are. Life's too short to, to not be who you are and uh, to love who you want to love. And Hey, it's all good something I didn't ask you was maybe one of your one or two of your favorite memories um, in hockey can, or even in the CA agency now um, of, I guess, stories that that has happened. I don't know, um, you know, whether it being with these NHL superstars or, or any big important games that, that you can remember and share for them. 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of my favorite events was uh, the 2016 World Cup of Hockey there with, with the all-star team that we had. Um, it was a unique tournament run by the NHL, you know, with Team North America and Team Europe. And, you know, we were in Toronto in, uh, you know, September. So it's beautiful weather. We went to a Jays game with the whole team, went down and met, you know, uh, Donaldson and uh, all those guys. And they were uh, just to see how those athletes intermingle and the questions they ask each other was super cool, you know, to see that. But also just the team we had, the we had rock stars like Brad Marchand didn't play. He was, I think they won the cup couple of years before that and he didn't play one second of power play at the world cup of hockey but yet he be- dragged his weight he you know he pulled his weight i should say he he showed up every day he got a massive goal for us uh against team europe there i think it was game two where taves dropped it back to him and he just snapped one top shelf and that's all he needed you know so what but you have these superstars coming in i remember sitting in the dressing room and you know, our healthy scratches for the game were uh, I was sitting on the couch and I've got Claude Giroux to the left of me and uh, Jake Muzzin and Braden Holtby, who just won the Vesna. They're all not playing because Team Canada is that good that Claude Giroux was healthy scratched. So, you know, you're sitting there and they're, they're all they're all bought in. They're like cheering for the game and they want to get in the lineup. They're super competitive, but they realize that, hey, it's just not they're not getting a tap on the shoulder today. You know, so it's it was really seeing those guys, you know, I got to work with Joe Thornton there, who's just a class act, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Personality and has been around the game so long, um, you know, to guys like Drew Doughty, to Shea Weber, to, you know, Kerry Price, um, you know, just to, to see that, that level uh, in Canada, you know, it's one thing at the Olympics because the Olympics, you can kind of, Oh, there's figure skating going on and you're part of like the whole team Canada there. There is, whereas world cup of hockey was just a hockey tournament. And uh, you know, to see that team, come together and play I could tell you they they weren't looking forward to playing that uh team North America because they uh they were a little worried about the young guns uh showing them up there so we never got that match up in the world cup of hockey but I could tell you the boys were were uh not excited to play that young buck team and uh, luckily we didn't have to and, and won that tournament uh playing Europe in the final but I think that was one of my favorites was just being around those high high level performing athletes but also executives you know like our coaching staff was Mike Babcock, Dave, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Joel Quenville, Bill Peters, Claude Julian, and Barry Trotz. So you're like, they're all National League head coaches, you know, but they're taking a step back to be an assistant to Babs because they want what's better for Hockey Canada too. So it's really about that buy-in, you know, that, you know, it sounds cliche, but check the egos at the door because we all want to win this thing together. And to see that at that high level um, was was unbelievable. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Banner. Um, everyone you know you know can tune in and and watch all these different videos but but bane who who's now approaching his second year working with caa hockey the it's a talent agency uh, working with jp barry and pat person um and and tons of of hockey canada experiences um so yeah thank you very much for taking the time and and again super proud of you and and thank you Yeah, my pleasure. Look forward to uh, doing it again here and happy to, uh, to chat anytime.